Hello. Been asked to just do a normal intro for once. Welcome, you lovely lot, to the first video on the new rebranded TML channel. We've got a few funky things going off in this particular video because not only is this the first video that's a non-gaming video, really, it's also the first video to include our new green screen set, which we're about to see, hopefully very soon. Got a bit more building to do. So let's get straight onto the topic of the video. But of course, subscribe, that would be lovely. This is a new rebranded channel, so thank you. If you happen to be about my age, <laughs> 18, 31, primary school for me, kindergarten, wherever you are, um, was an exciting time. There were lots of trends that were going around, lots of games, things we could collect. So some of these that I'm about to name, you might remember. Just a sec. Welcome, everyone, to Team Owl News. This is what you can do with a green screen. I've just literally found this picture and plonked myself behind a desk. Amazing technology. Yes, first up of the kids' playground activities in about 1999 would have been Beyblades. I never really got into it. It became quite violent in the playground I was in. People started putting the knuckles towards them. But um, yeah, very popular. Anyway. We're live, mate. Um, second one, Pogs. Do you remember Pogs in the crisp chip packets it used to collect? Used to love those little discus things. I think they had Looney Tunes and all sorts. Yep, good times. Greasy as though, weren't they? Really greasy. Monitor. It just keeps going up and down. Um, yeah, last but definitely not least, the Game Boy. Who could forget that? Hours of fun. There used to be that awesome little connecting thing that you used to be able to do that was like an infrared. Um, we used to think we were badasses because that we could transfer data and I think it was like one megabyte if we were lucky. And apart from a million sports that I used to participate in, that was about it. Or was it? I need to get this transition working better. It doesn't have the same effect when you have to back backspace four times. It that definitely was not it. The biggest one and the most addictive collecting card game ever was of course Pokemon. And uh, well, leads us onto this video quite nicely. As a kid in the playground, I used to run a strict operation. Um, basically, I never used to buy any Pokemon cards ever. Um, the only time I'd get them was betting people in sports. So we'd play five a side. If I will, if I won, I stole your Charizard shiny. It was as simple as that. Thank goodness I was okay at sports. <laughs> so I ended up with this huge collection of cards. A um, bit of a wheel and deal, Del Boy operation going off until a chap came up to me and wanted to give me this shiny Pokemon card, which happened later on. I realised it was a very good fake. So I wasn't impressed. As soon as I realised, I went over to the suspect in question, um, asked him for my car back. He said no, so I punched him in the face. If you want some, I'll give it you. True story. Anyway, long story short, he threatened to go to the headmaster and tell on me and tell my parents. So I instead bribed him by giving him my entire pack of Pokemon cards, which would have been a stack like this. I'm not. I'm not joking. Um, yeah, bit of a bit of casual blackmail, law and order style. But luckily for us, 21 years on, I still haven't grown up. I'm still that kid in the playground. Um, and because of that, for the first time in two decades, I've ordered, well, pre-ordered two packs of Pokemon cards. So it's been a cool little thing to come back to. Do you know when you were a kid and you find something that's still continuing strong like Pokemon? If, if, if anything, it's getting even more popular again, having done... Bit of a roller coaster trend, but I don't know whether it was just me. But I had a guy keep popping up on my Facebook feed called Leon Le Leo Leon Hart or someone, something like that. Um, and he's basically the big, biggest Pokemon geek. He literally looks like he's gonna shit his pants every time he opens a pack of Pokemon cards. It's quite addictive to watch, and it got the it got the flow again. I was like, get the juices flowing. What? There's no harm in going to get another pack. So I ended up getting a pack and then pre-ordering these two monsters. So. 
here we are okay then this is the setting question this is apparently the newest sword and shield evolving skies elite trainer box inside here features everything that you need to basically play the pokemon card game which i've never done i'm here for just the rares so no messing about i've got two of these boxes two different ones um i might do another video on the second one depending on how this one goes but it's all it's all a bit exciting so apparently these would have been worth a lot more keeping them sealed and like this is how rare these things have become. I'm not even joking. This in 10 years could be worth like 10 times the amount quite easily. So this is a little lovely booklet that basically tells you what you can collect. Move that to the side. Okay, a manual on how to play the card game. No thanks. But it all comes down to our booster packs of Evolving Skies upside down sorted that out okay so I won't, I won't have any of these cards so it's it's quite cool that opened that's your code card trick I'm assuming is going to be three so you put the three to the front and then you're left with the best ones at the back so Baldor Aroma Lady lovely Moon and Sun Badge the Webble. Uh, if I'm pronouncing these wrong, it's not my fault. Okay. Rufflet. Rog and Roller. Woe Buffet. Woe. <laughs> I'm crucifying these names. Hopip. A Reverse Shiny. Flo Flo Floetti. And, uh, well, there you go. A chin chow? A chewy? Yeah. Pet little? <laughs> A pet a little. <laughs> Sorry, kids. A full face guard. <gasps> what are these orders? They're odd. Um, full face guard, which he happens to be a shiny. We'll save the ones that are rare in the pack that we think are rare, and we'll uh, do the values at the end. So, full face guard is in the rare pile. The first one. Now we're talking. Esp Espion. <laughs> Espion V. That is a full art, as you can see. It's a beautiful card. That's definitely going to be in the pile to Google. This is it. The final pack. Please be kind to us. Just to make you feel much worse when you're 31 years old. It says six plus in the corner. Yeah, thanks for that. Oh, that was a lucky strip. Did you see that? That was uh, that was fancy. I might do the card trick just for look. Three. Upside down. Lombre, Rapid Strike, go away, Fle Fletchinder, Bergmise, Kavana, Emolga, Slowcock, oh my god, we've got something amazing at the back of this, Slaykoth, Gostifler, Sable Eye, Reverse Shiny, I'm going to hide this one so you can't see it. Ready? Energy? <laughs> Ooh. Now, guys, we're talking. We are in 
in with a chance with that. That is a beauty. Look at that card. Absolute stunner. Probably better at that angle for just for lighting, but that is a beautiful, beautiful looking card. So this is cool little practice with a green screen to be able to do this with the golf videos as well. We can buy and sell and find out what bargains we, bargains we can get for retro reviews. So it's all a bit of practice in uh, Method to the Madness, as one would say. But we start with a Sable Eye, Reverse Hollow. Um, we, uh, we're not going to be retiring on that one. That's uh, coming up as used at $3.30. Maybe it will go up in value, but it's definitely worth one of the wallets just in case. So next up is the Entai card, and again, we won't be buying a yacht with that one. But again, it's something you'd expect from a reverse hollow. Very, very rarely are they uh, worth much, to be honest. Quite popular in packs. This, on the other hand, wow. 55 cents, 40 cents, $1.20. I mean, it's getting emotional. Here we go. <laughs> Worth a whopping $8.99. So, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, a pack, if you get that in a pack, a pack's going to cost you, what, 6 7 So you made a bit of a profit just with one card if you want to look at it like that. I mean, that's conditioned as well. It says it's near mint. So, mine's better than that. There we go. So if you were to find this in a pack and you've paid... I don't know what six seven dollars for you've made a pretty decent profit but the point is it's a beautiful card it's like a keeper for me it's going in the rear but I mean this is this pack these packs have just been released so you could say there's a very good chance years to come if you keep this in very good condition it's gonna make a bit it's gonna it's gonna obviously increase but out of the pack um, Maybe that last card got us the money back, with in total with the other bits and bobs. But like I say, it's, it's not we're not it's not about the money. The value is what attracts people to this sort of stuff because you want to know exactly. It's, it's the way of knowing how rare, how wanted these particular cards are. So great little pack. Really enjoyed doing that, guys. Something very different. Um, let me know what you thought. Yes, like I say, this channel is going to be everything. We're going to have meet the huskies day-to-day -day stuff random things like this I'm gonna do a bit on my stream again some gaming videos still it's just gonna be a mosh pit oh, I miss a mosh pit COVID. thanks as always for watching remember hit the subscribe button that would mean the world follow us on social media the links are below thank you